What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Back Up Blue Shirts. I am your host, Michael Sparacino, a.k.a. Shades, alongside my co-host, Brendan Moroy, a.k.a. Mo Goon, a.k.a. The Big Goon. And Brendan, it, you know why I'm excited for this episode? I do. Well, one, it's it's episode number 15, so obviously, you know, we have to dedicate this episode. We start this off every single time. And Mike, you, you want to do the honors? I do want to do the honors. We are dedicating this episode to none other than Goat Jr., Tanner Glass. Tanner Glass. And and funny enough, our news on the Rangers front actually starts with Tanner Glass. No, he's not dead. He's, <laughs> I didn't expect you to go there on that uh, one. No, no, this is good news. No, he gets hired by the Rangers. Legitimately. Awesome, you score one goal against Carey Price. Top shelf. <laughs> Top shelf, backhand off the faceoff, wins you the game. Pretty yeah, much was a game winning goal. Pretty much locks up that position for you later in later in your career. So hey, still doesn't justify his good contract. For him, man. But whatever. hey, listen, <laughs> good for him. He gets the role. What is it? Develop development role? Like he's going to be developing, yeah, prospects some, and stuff. Some something along those lines. Yeah. Wow, I didn't think he would be the guy to do it. But hey, listen, not that actually. Funny enough, when you look back at Tanner Glass, he was actually a really good skater. Yeah, he was actually. He can fly. So everybody's going to be a good skater and a hitter, but they're not going to be able to bury it. But not then again, I can't say that because he did bury it in the playoffs. But it was one game. Doesn't matter. One baby. game. One goal. One goal. One game. Wins you the series, baby. Okay, let's let's just be honest. That was the most beautiful goal he's ever scored oh, hands in down. his life. Absolutely. And that's exactly why this episode is dedicated to him. Well, that and he wore number fifteen. That's, that's true. also why. That is true. But. We'll move on from the Tanner Glass. Well, I'm sure we'll make some sort of reference back to him at some point. But yeah, we probably will. Mike, let's move on. So moving on from the Tanner Glass news, new Stanley Cup fucking champs, baby. New Stanley Cup champions, St. Louis Blues, in Game Seven in Boston, oh. come up clutch. The right guy showed up for the game, and wow, what an ending! That guy being Jordan, the Jordan, brick wall, Bennington. Jordan Bennington, and Ryan O'Reilly, and all those guys. Tarasenko showed up. Swartz, but I mean, they really owe the game to Bennington, honestly, because oh, yeah. the way that he played in that first period was out of the out of his mind. That was probably one of the most recent best goal setting performances I've seen. And and funny enough, because he was he was pretty terrible. That series, basically. I mean, yeah, leading I, into I the agree. game, I mean, he had just above a 900 save percentage, and his goals against was above three. I so, I mean, it. he was he I was bad, it. but listen, he was good when he needed to be after a loss, which he was all playoffs, and he basically stole that first period, and that stole them the game. I mean, yeah. they had it was a Chell game, basically. I mean, they had, and I when I reference Chell game, I mean that usually one team just dominates an entire period and then you get like three shots on goal and they score two goals. That's basically what happened in this game. And I'm a little disappointed I didn't even get to watch the game because yeah. I had my bowling league Wednesday night. But, hey, yeah. I bowled great and the Blues won, so it yeah. turned out to be a great night. I mean, night. listen, basically to do a little breakdown, I mean, St. Louis dominated the first couple minutes of the game. Then it was all Boston the rest of the period. They got a power play. They dominated on that. Bennington made about like 10 out of his mind saves. Blues took a slap shot from the point. Ryan O'Reilly deflected it, went right in, one nothing. Six seconds left in the period. If, if I'm a Boston Bruins fan, I just want to bring this up. I, I don't even know what I would have said with Martian. I honestly, like if I owned a Martian jersey, I probably would have just thrown it out because that was the worst play I've ever seen by a guy. First of all, he gets back on defense, which is good. But even all series, is him getting back on defense is. He has absolutely no defensive ability whatsoever. Huh. Goes for the hit, misses it. Then he goes for the line change. Bro, it's Right six, when three St. Louis guys six, walk into the zone. There's six seconds left in the period. Why are you going for a line change? That's just absurd. And then he doesn't even follow the play. He's like, did you even look before you went off for the line change? Petrangelo jumps right up in the play. Drop yeah. pass, walks right in for the back end. That was pretty much the game right there. I saw something that apparently he said, like, I thought I only saw one guy in the zone. I'm just like, well, are you blind? Well, he he screwed that one up. I think he knows that he screwed it up. But anyway, that was basically the game. I couldn't really bounce back from that. Are you I blind? Mean, with six seconds left to score a goal, that, that to me was, like, devastating for Boston, especially how well they played that period. And oh, yeah. They didn't really, they just couldn't, they didn't have an answer. I mean, they scored, but it was too late in the game at that point. And, yeah, I mean, 
Now that's why they lost. But I mean, when you look at the series as a whole, I mean, really, what happened was that Boston's top line couldn't do absolutely anything the entire yep. series. Yep. That ended up costing them in the end. Really, I mean, yeah, they were good on the power play, which was pretty good all series. But I mean, they just five on five. They were just couldn't do anything. I nope. mean, I don't know if they were all hurt. I'm sure they were. Probably. That's not I mean, really everybody's hurt. Everybody's hurt, exactly. I'm pretty sure the report came out. Except, Ryan O'Re- probably except Craig Berube. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan O'Reilly played with a cracked rib, and he was still oh, unreal. He won the Consmite MVP. I mean, that was pretty obvious. Yeah, honestly. So I saw the the voting list for the Consmite, and some people put Bennington first. And I was just like... Rask had the superior stats by a long shot the entire playoffs. How are you putting Bennington in front of him? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like how, and that's how li- stupid. Is can that you the be? list that came out prior to the win? I think it might have been after. Okay, well that's, well, that's at least I saw it. After. I mean, I mean, listen. Then in that case, I could see why because Bennington played out of his mind in a game seven, clinched the series. But yeah, still. but still, his Rask oh, numbers yeah, were significantly. Yeah, better. I know. I mean, even in the end, I mean. And it's not that Rask really didn't show up to Game 7. I mean, His it, team didn't. I mean, in all honesty, I at mean... The, at the worst times. I mean, in all honesty, just... He probably could have had that first goal, but even so, I mean, Boston just... If they would have scored that first goal, who knows what would have happened because they were rolling in that first period. Yeah, they were. And then just to have that heartbreaker goal go in, that kind of ruined them for the series. But I think that's what it came down to in the end. I mean, I think the top six of... Of St. Louis was just better than theirs, and funny enough, if it wasn't for Austin's bottom six forwards, their third and fourth line, who knows what would have happened? Because yeah. that Corrali line and Achari and Nordstrom, I mean, they pretty much carried the Bruins yeah. basically. Through, I mean, they were good last round; they were good all playoffs. So, uh, no, definitely. That just goes to show you right there, having those deaf players is essential. Now, the m- real question is, how drunk did? Brett Hull get <laughs> that's true that I night. Mean, that's true. How drunk did he? Get? Is he still drunk? That's true. He might be. I don't know. I mean, the last game he was pretty whacked, but that was pretty hilarious. I don't know. That, he's, that's he was the real question. He was, def- he was definitely getting hammered. He probably gets hammered every day, though. He's probably an alcoholic, I imagine. <laughs> I mean, not to be disrespectful, but he does look like one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's pretty obvious. But uh, obviously, then again, that's like ninety percent of old NHL players. So. Okay, you got h- half a point on that one. But, well, I mean, I'm glad the Blues won. First oh, yeah, ever championship I, ever. Dude, and I just plus, didn't want to see Boston get a third parade this yeah. year. I mean, listen, and plus, if you're old, you're probably like, you're sick of the Bruins, considering oh, yeah. if you were around back then, that was the team that beat you in the cup more than once, I believe. Yeah, maybe. So, I mean, Well, for it them, was either them or Montreal, because <laughs> they, they were seemingly yeah, in it every six. year. But, yeah, I'm glad... Uh, I'm glad St. Louis won, man. They deserved it. Finally, after so, f- and also I'm just so after sick 43 of seeing these years. Same, I think I'm just so sick of seeing these same teams win the cup. So it's nice to see. Well, Actually, minus you know, last year, Washington. But now, now that you brought that up, they were talking about like long droughts ending. Like Chicago ended in 2010, like a 49 year drought. Bruins won for the first time in like 30 something yeah. years in 2011. LA won for the first time ever, 2012. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, and they've been around. For, they were around for a while. La- last games. year, the Capitals won the first time ever, and this year, the Blues won the first time ever. Uh, Vegas is next, then. No. Put the money on. No, it. please, no. <laughs> please. Vegas please, is no. next for the first time. Cup winners, obviously. But oh man, nah, man, they're in the third year. They need like That's four true, more yeah. years they of need heartbreak. Like, at no, least. screw that. They need like 20 years of heartbreak. Okay, like every yeah. other team has that to make, go through. That, that makes sense. But, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, man. 20 is a good number. I mean, I, I don't want to say I'm happy the Bruins lost, but I'm like, damn. I'm, oh, no, I'm, I'm happy glad. the Bruins no, lost. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad that they they didn't end up winning that game just because I didn't want to see Marshan and those guys. Oh, dude, when they showed Marshan crying after, I literally <laughs> saw that and just said, fuck you, Marshan. <laughs> it's like, I'm so sick of his shit. Yeah. And then, uh, ironically enough, he's the one that ended up really blowing it for them that game, too. So. I, I did see just that line change. I didn't. Oh, man. He didn't really awful. play that good the awful. whole game, but. I mean, he was good in game six, so I guess. It kind of offsets, but whatever. But, I mean, you can't make those types of boneheaded plays in game seven of the Stanley Cup final. It's true. That's true. So, do you want to move on to back to Rangers news? Yeah, let's go back to the Rangers, man. Why not? All right. Well, you know, this, is, this isn't this is technically Rangers news. This is ex-Rangers news. Kevin Hayes 
possibly signing with Philly. Apparently, they were close on a contract. Yeah, I know we were talking about this last last uh, last episode, we, and literally traded ten minutes rights. before we started recording. Yeah, we, why would a team? Exactly oh yeah, well, what this, you said. Why would a team debate. trade for your rights? Yeah, I don't get that. Trade either. for rights. I mean, the only thing like we were saying is that I could think of is like they want to show that show the free agent that they're interest, but I mean they yeah, can literally at, just at the contact same time like agent. some guys already have their mind made up where they're gonna go before like three weeks before yeah. free agency yeah, it's months before maybe yeah I mean to me that's like it's kind like of just Panarin, a and he's either going to the Rangers or the Panthers yeah I mean <laughs> you're gonna see that who like you said I mean even though it's a fifth round pick you might not think of any of it but hey listen six seven six, years six, down exactly. the road that pick can be absolutely crucial. Exactly. I mean, so. look at Henrik Lundqvist, seventh round pick. Yeah, that's true. It's a good and point. A bunch of other pl- like Dustin Bufflin and Joe Pavelski off the top of my head were seventh rounders. Yeah, I mean, I feel and like look, for, look where they went. I mean, listen when when the Rangers were negotiating contracts with Hayes, I mean, it made, he made it pretty obvious, at least that from what I've seen in the reports that came out, that he was looking for something that was long term and also money. So I feel like for him, I like, didn't want to give it. Do to you him. really think that he's I don't know. Like, do you really think he even cares what team he plays for, or do you think he just wants the money? Like, I can't even tell at this point. Like, if Philly offers him sure. like a seven-year deal, like seven million dollars a season, I mean, he's gonna take it. I think, uh, depending uh, on the other offers. Yeah, I think I would. I would take that too. You know. Right, oh yeah. Right absolutely. now, I'd take that. Oh, definitely. Sit, sit on the bench, eighty-two <laughs> games. You know. I <laughs> oh, listen. I mean, good for Hayes. I mean, he's gonna get paid, and I get it. But I'm, you know, I, I mean, listen. I guess Philly must be the most interested in him out of everybody. I mean, it was probably AV. Yeah. Just like, guys, I want to bury Hayes some more. Please trade for him and sign him so I can stuck, yeah. stick him on the third line. I, I remember seeing the report. I can't remember what it was. I think it was a Philadelphia like beat writer, and he was saying how like Hayes' game like flourished under AV, and his like, only his only like his justification game yeah, flourished. His his only justification for that basically was that he had twenty five goals, which was the most that he ever scored under AV. But anybody that's because he shot the puck more. Yeah, but but even so, I mean. For most fans that watch, they know that he used to just get, along with pretty much every other young guy that AV ever played, just get buried basically yeah, in the bench. Seriously. Like I'm, I'm so glad that I mean him and Miller. Yeah, especially. exactly. And and Miller, I mean Miller, kind of kind of got like a double time too, because he used to get benched by John Tortorella, so or oh, sent down to the minors even oh, yeah, worse. That too. But and listen, he turned out. Not bad. Not bad. So, I mean. But even like he wasn't playing that well for Tampa in the playoffs. No, Apparently he was so. on the f- like fourth line at times. Yeah. He's, I mean, Tampa just fell apart in the playoffs. But Oh, that was nice. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad you brought that up. That was just so good. But And I'm still jealous of your coworker who put 100 bucks down on Columbus sweeping Tampa. Oh, yeah. You know, with 10 grand. Yeah, that was crazy. Fucking ridiculous. Yeah. I, mean, that was, I, I could use that type of That luck. was some call. I don't think anybody else would have made that. If you were, unless you were a Columbus Blue Jackets fan, but I mean, I don't even think Columbus Blue Jackets fans thought that they were going to beat Tampa. I think they just dude, I would I would have wanted to put like five hundred down on that, and come away with fifty grand. Yeah, that would have been great. But going back to Hayes, yeah, I mean, I I, I just I, can't it's wait hard, for it. It's just I like, just can't wait for Flyers fans to get sick of AV, and then Rangers fans are just going to be happy. It's that just they're, it's that fun, they're mad it's about just that. funny, like just to think, like do. You, I feel like Kevin Hayes is like I don't want to fucking play under this guy. Like if and 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 on, in all honesty, watching Hayes, like I think he might have played his best hockey under Quinn. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I I think that you're seeing that with yeah. a lot of our guys, to be honest with you, because he just seems like he works. I'm mean, not that Hayes is necessarily young anymore, but I mean, he still is. But he's not. He's like twenty. He's not young right? like you know Hedl and Anderson and those oh, yeah. guys. But I mean, I'm glad that we never that Av didn't get a chance to really ruin Hedl. I mean. At least Hedo gets to really develop under Quinn. Well, Hedo played nine games under. Yeah, eight. yeah, but so, um, but not you which know, is, not a whole season. Yeah, so that's not enough time to ruin him, <laughs> which is a very good thing. I mean, even Quinn. I mean, but listen, Quinn's tough on on Hedo too. But for well, I mean, own. he's t- dude. He's tough on everyone. He that's be- true. He brenched, did I just say brenched? You kind of said benched and brenched, but I know okay. what you meant. Anyway, he benched Shattenkirk and Shea. That really. That's true. Like that stuck out to me. It's like, all right, this guy actually means business on like AV. That's true. Uh, okay, just real quick. Speaking of the Flyers, they traded for Matt Niskanen. They traded Radko Gudis, and they held back thirty percent of Gudis's salary. I'm just like, that's a favor to the Caps for no reason. Yeah, and that really and is that literally happened what today, right? Recent, yeah, most recently. 
breaking breaking trade news by Shades. They should have just kept Hextall in all seriousness. They're just impatient bunch of idiots. That's all I got to say about the Flyers. Anyways, let's just real quick. The Islanders also signed Everly a five and a half million for five years. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't see that either. Could I could have sworn he was gonna go for seven, and they get him at that at that low. What the hell's going on? I think they're trying to make a uh, maybe guys trying to take uh, some cap friendly deals. Maybe trying to sign maybe one of those big big name free agents. I'm sorry. I mean, I'll listen. I don't if. It, I'm sorry. If I knew I could get like ten million more on the open market over the course of a contract, I'm going to to UFA. That's true. Because I, mean, I listen, guarantee I mean, you, a you team would have paid at least seven for Everly. True. But listen, I mean, listen. If he really, if he likes it in Long Island, he might like it in New York. So if he's just like, hey, listen, it's five what, years. Well, I mean, they're playing at Barclays Center still. I don't know why anyone likes that. That's true. But hey, listen. I mean, if he got comfortable there, and that's if he's, I mean, five and a half want, million isn't I bad. Mean, he probably wanted to play under Trots too. That, that could have factored into it. That's true. You never know. I mean, but listen. I, I still hate the Islanders. Oh, of course. But I'm just saying, I mean, you never know what kind of moves they can make, too. I mean, and we were just literally just talking about, I was I was just talking about this. And I was thinking, I was like, man, like, I feel like the teams that end up winning the championships always, always happen to have guys that are willing to take some sort of, like, player-friendly deal. I just feel like that's how you have to build teams nowadays. Good luck, Maple Leafs. Not to get off, not to get off topic, but since we were talking about re-signing guys, I did, that just came to my head earlier. Like when you think about it, even like Crosby and Malkin kind of have cap friendly deals, honestly. Yeah, sort of. I mean, then you then you look at a team like Edmonton, and they just like, I get it, it's Connor McDavid, but like really, I mean, you have to like build a team around Connor McDavid. He's not a, I mean, he's a god, but he's not. He's not superhuman. Like, well, he's I mean, not going to carry. At the, look at some other contracts on that team. Oh They're yeah, just the, awful. the Lucic contracts as well. Right? I mean, not that he was not. He's not even on them anymore. No, but, he is. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh shit. I was going to say. I mean, I know he had a bad contract. Another bunch of idiots. I mean, at least Drysaddle scored fifty goals for them this year. So he, I mean, somehow, yeah, I mean, somehow. I, if he's playing with Connor McDavid, I guess it doesn't really surprise me. But that still gives him one line. But right, I, I mean, I just. That was a point I want to bring up. I I just think it's interesting that I feel like when you look at even Mika Zibanejad's contract. Oh, that's a bargain. I, that's what I'm that's saying. A I mean, he, but he's the type of guy that looks like he would be willing to have a you know still get paid, but have a cap friendly deal at least, so the Rangers could sign more pieces. He, he was probably thinking, ah, you know what, H- Hank got the big contract. I'll take the small one, and then we'll flip flop in three years. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, yeah, exactly. Now next contract, fourteen million dollars. Oh, That's what God. he's gonna want. No, I mean, all but right. I'm I'm sick and tired of talking about Islanders and all that. Let's let's go back to another ex Ranger, Rick. The, oh yeah, as our right. as our boy Brian likes to call him, Blueberry Man that's Nash. Right. Blueberry Man. That's, oh, that's. I still don't know why he does that. Oh, well, but that's, it's that was me and Cantos. We came up with Blueberry Man. All right, so Blue, Hughes. I, I'm not Blue, giving you well, credit Blue, anymore. Well, Blueberry Man. Hughes stays with it, so I respect him for that. All he, right, he's yeah. the one that consistently calls him Blueberry Man. But I just, I don't know. I always just made up this joke that like Rick Nash would be like. <laughs> like I always had a joke that Rick Nash for some reason like he looked like he was a little bit of like a baby sometimes like like a sissy like he wouldn't go after and like hit people sometimes you know even oh, yeah, though that's yeah, not yeah. really his game yeah. but like we always had this joke that like once he once he had like a kid he became like more like you know like not scared but like he was a little yeah I guess like he was more scared of like getting injured and stuff so he wouldn't want to yeah. like go for hits and stuff so me and Matt were like oh yeah like he's the type of guy that like he wouldn't order blue blueberries in like a smoothie because he's like he didn't want to go over like the sugar content or something like that. <laughs> so that's why we started calling him Blueberry Man. <laughs> Makes absolutely no sense. I mean, other than that, like that was the only reason. It was so stupid. Made no sense whatsoever. Like if he probably heard it, he'd be like, "Really, bro?" Like that's probably what he would say. Like you're an idiot. But I just well, I mean, hey, we call Mark Stahl the goat and Tanner Glass Goat Junior. So. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not even like, not even that I want to disrespect Rick Nash, but I mean, I mean, if he heard that, he would probably probably laugh. Honestly, <laughs> I mean, like you know, he was just like he became more health conscious. Like after he had his kid, that was kind of like the joke. So he'd be like, "Oh yeah, you know, it's too much sugar. I don't want to have blueberries." <laughs> 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 but 
I mean, listen, there is people like that that don't want to get blueberries in smoothies because they are sh- afraid that it's too much sugar. But anyway, and you let's move know on. What we call those people? We call them <laughs> sissies. But any anyway, he gets hired by the Columbus Blue Jackets on a more as si- a yeah. special assistant to, to actually the general get manager. into the news about Rick Nash. Yes, yeah. special assistant to the general manager. Yo, X Rangers getting hired left and right here. Listen, Jeez, no, honestly, they should have just hired him as janitor. But whatever. <laughs> But I remember that's the first thing you text. I feel like man. is it uh, is it me or is like the hockey like higher up positions like they just get more and more complicated like with the titles. Yeah, seriously. Say that again. Special assistant to the general manager. <laughs> like, what does that even? Mean? I have no clue. <laughs> what does that even mean? Special assistant to the general manager. I don't even like, know. Does he have exactly more than one assistant? Doing. I don't understand. Well, I mean, technically, you have assistant general managers. That's true. But he's not an assistant general manager. He's a special assistant to the general manager. Exactly. It's like Dwight Schrute in the office. He's not the assistant regional manager. He's the assistant to the regional manager. Right. <laughs> so basically, Rick Nash is going to be going out getting coffee for the manager. Hey, if they pay me to do that, That's I would. Right. If the Rangers pay me to do that, I would gladly do that. I guess they just want him around the players. I'm assuming. Well, I mean, look what happened with St. Louis. What's his name? Was the defensive coach? Who? Um, not, what the hell's his name? It was, um, I love how now I'm drawing a blank out of all times. He was, you used to be a defenseman for him, I think. Scott, not Scotty Upshaw. What the hell's his name? He he was in the league for years. Not Prager? No, no. Oh my God, I'm drawing such a blank. He played for them like three years ago. I don't think I'm going to get it. Oh my. God. That's all right, whatever. But I I understand your point. But anyway, he like a former player, and then editing this in it was Steve Ott. Yeah, they shut down defense. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, didn't Tampa Bay just hire? No, it wasn't Tampa Bay that hired uh, Saint Louis during the season, was it? Oh yeah, it was. It was no, Tampa- Columbus. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. They got him for a power play coach, right? I was thinking John Tortorella. That's what I was thinking. I knew it had something to do with Tortorella. I, dude, I still love Tor- that six minutes of him just going nuts on people. One of the greatest videos of all time. So, what do, what, do, uh, what other news do we have to talk about on the Rangers front? Well, it's getting closer to draft. We got what, what that's, we're, that's pretty much a oh, week yeah. away from from Spe- draft. Sp- speaking of draft, it's Capo Caco season. Hopefully, Capo Caco will be a New York Ranger one week from today. All he right. will be. All right, he will be. I hope so. I'm, I mean, listen. No, I'm, I'm really going to get arrogant with this. He's going to be a Ranger. I don't. I could really care less whether or not we get Cap. I mean, listen. Either one of those guys is great. Dude, give me Caco. I mean, That's we've true. been so fixated on this for months. All Rangers fans, just give him to me. That's true. Give him to us. That's true. I mean, I mean, listen. I feel like when it comes to the draft, we know either we're going to get Hughes or Caco. If we get Caco, awesome. If we get Hughes. It's I'll, fun. Exactly. I'll take it, man. I mean, but Fucking, I'm more. I'm get, more concerned about what's going to happen later in this draft. Like, are the Rangers going to keep that pick tw- twenty? Yeah, are we going to keep that's the real question? Pick, or are we going to trade up and we try gotta, to draft somebody else? Are we going to Are we going to trade down? No, that's are we I, gonna, meant, I meant to say trade down. Sorry, are, I was or thinking trade up, up as in like or trade true. up. I was either thinking, way. I was or thinking, package it in a deal to get somebody. You mean trade? You mean trade down as in like you know like get maybe like the sixth overall pick or something like that? Right. That's what you mean by trade down. That's what I mean by trade up. Okay, trade up. Okay, so I was no, I was trade thinking. down is in like move back move back to like twenty five yeah, and get okay. like a second round or something. That's what I was thinking when I when I said that's what I meant like get a get a higher pick. Or but, um, do they package it in a deal to get rid of a couple other people to bring yeah. one specific person? That's in? true. I mean, listen. I mean, from the sounds of it, I mean, I mean, look do at you our think really anybody. A lot of people are off the table. I mean, I don't even think Kreider or any of them. VZ, they can all be potentially you not never on know. the Rangers next week. So. You never know. I mean, I hope they. Re- I mean, I hope we get Kreider. I hope we don't trade him personally, I, but I hope we keep Kreider. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> what I meant to say. I'm, as in, I hope we keep him. Dude, but. I, like out of all the guys to get, I am so sick and tired of the Jacob Truba like trade hypotheticals. It's just like I see them every day, and it's been going on for like a year. Yeah, it's just all and I'm just like, just f- stop talking about it until something actually happens. Yeah. Well, listen. Actually, speaking of uh, news on the rumors front, thank God. The Sharks. Thank are, 
I mean, God. not that this completely takes the Rangers out of it, I guess, but apparently the Sharks and Eric Carlson are in contract negotiations. I did see that. So I'm really hoping that they sign him so then we don't have to worry about the Rangers. Even L- literally the last thing it. the Rangers need is another overpaid, right-handed, offensive it's always, it, There's defenseman. so much news out there right now. about Get somebody that can play defense like your boy Dan Girardi back <laughs> in the day. No, but I'm thinking about, like, I can never tell. Like, there's just so many places to like that you hear news from. It's exactly. Like, I, I, can't, I don't know whether or not it's, like... Is it just bullshit speculation that people just keep retweeting and then rewriting about, or is it actually happening? Like, did did Eric Carlson literally? Is that really a thought that was going through the our GM's mind, Gordon's mind? Honestly, like going after Carlson. Like, I don't. You never know. That's what I'm saying. Like, is it true or is it bullshit? But anyway, we know. Well, I that- mean, here's the thing: we literally just traded for Fox and signed him. Yeah, I, I and do. We, and we literally have a right plethora. Now. Of defensive yeah, prospects. Yeah, makes no we, sense. We don't need Eric Carlson. We really don't. But on the bright side, I hope the Sharks re-sign him anyway. So. Hey, he worked He worked. Yeah, I mean, listen, he kind of worked with When him. he was healthy. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, is he going to be healthy? That's always the question probably for the rest that, of his career. That's the main reason I don't want us. That's why I, I wouldn't want, want him either. But hey, he still took a picture with me, so I'm happy. That's true. And then he got injured, so Shades shades curse. But uh, you're, you're welcome. But uh, anyway... Hey, you're, you, you're welcome. The Sharks didn't win the cup because of that, and you were rooting so hard against them, so you're welcome. You're absolutely right. I was, dude. <laughs> I wanted, I, listen, I wanted I wanted Vegas to make the West Conference Finals again, but can't always Hey, they almost did. Can't always get what you want, I guess. And then on in all honesty, almost I was did. actually pulling for Dallas sort of. from the West, and they lost. I was pulling for Dallas solely because of the first rounder and Zook. I mean, when you think about it, dude, I mean, you're talking oh, about a team speaking that was of, literally... Speaking of Zuccarello... Dallas Stars, sign them, you cowards. Give us that first rounder next year. Oh, that's right. Cowards. Oh, yeah, that's right. I wasn't even. I totally forgot about that. Has there even been any news about that? I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard any concrete speculation, rumors, or anything. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's going to go probably end up happening after, what is it, July 1st again? Right? July 1st. July 1st, dude. It's a big day. Oh, yeah. So... You want to you want to know what's probably gonna happen? I just thought of this off the top of my head. Another team is gonna sign Zook. We lose out on the first rounder, and then the Stars are gonna trade for him halfway through the season. Give another team a pick just so they didn't have to give it to us. Watch <laughs> that happen. That'd be pretty funny. And then all Rangers fans would be going, "Fucking assholes! Just give us that. Just give us the first rounder. We're the ones rebuilding." And they'll probably give it to like Chicago or some. But not that he's going to. I sign mean, when that. you think about it, but Dallas was pretty goddamn close to giving us that pick. I mean, they lost. It was. It was game seven. Game overtime, seven. Right? I feel like nowadays, like whoever oh, wins, just, just saying that game seven overtime was so dull compared to Sharks nights. I'll tell you right now, I'm I'm gonna just start picking whatever team wins a game in triple overtime or double overtime or something along those lines, it's game seven. I'm just going to start picking them to win the Stanley Cup because it literally seems that every single team that wins some sort of insane overtime game or something always ends up winning the Stanley Cup. Always. Yeah. Kings. Don't. I knew you were going to bring that up. Why? Always. That still pisses me off, man. Add it to St. Louis this this time. You know, uh, you know what? Now that you bring that up, like back in, what was it, 2016, friggin' like the Penguins scored in that like crazy overtime to finish off the Capitals, and I was just like, fuck. Yeah. I think the I think the odds came out um, already for who. I mean, and Chicago when they won, they scored a ton of overtime goals those years. It's true, and I I was thinking about this actually too. They, I think the odds already came out in Vegas for who's Kings in 2014. Uh, who's the um, who's the favorite favorite for already? Yeah, that's I mean, a it's great Tampa question. Bay. I mean, it's Tampa Bay. I think it already came out. <laughs> it shouldn't be after last season. <laughs> that's true, but I mean, you know that they're probably gonna have another monster regular season again. That's pretty much and then get swept in the playoffs right again. Stone. <laughs> One of these years they're gonna pull through. Watch. Hey, I don't know, man. Some teams never do. That's I mean, true. look look at how long it took St. Louis. Look how long it took Washington. That too. And I mean, Washington's been good literally every single season, since, basically. Since, since like 2010. Yeah, they were like basically. really good. St. Louis was good from like, what was it, 2011, 2012? I, mean, I, I really think their missing piece is always just the goaltending, honestly. Re- oh, that's one more thing I want to bring up. The w- Literally, the one year St. Louis had a competent goaltender heading into the playoffs is the one year they win. Yep. 
I mean, Brian Elliott always got exposed in the playoffs. Jake Allen just sucked. Meanwhile, he has he wins a Stanley Cup. Oh, and Cup. how can I Fucking. actually forget about it? Speaking of Rangers legends, and oh, all of us got oh. a surprise when we got to see our boy Michael, Michael Delzato Michael on the Delzato. ice with. That was the first time I think he ever even put the Blues jersey on, to be honest. I don't think he ever played. I don't even think he gets his name on the cup or walked or touched the cup. I don't think he even did. I mean, he definitely gets to touch it. Yeah, but I don't think his name gets on it because he didn't play a game during the game during the playoffs, and he didn't play any games during the season that I recall. I don't remember. I don't think he even gets his name on the cup. Hey, I mean, he was still on the team that won. That's got to count for something, That's true, right? but technically, I don't think he really even – does he even get counted technically? Great question. I don't think he gets his name on the cup. We're definitely going to look back at this. I mean, episode, listen. This specific episode three months from now. Oh, yeah. Back, by the way, Del Sal got his name on the cup. Damn it. That's like another back in the day, like, Sean Avery got his name on the 2002 Detroit Red Wings Cup, but that's because he actually played during the regular season. And the only reason he didn't play during the playoffs is because he got hurt. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I had no idea Avery was in the league in Oto. Yep. He won the Stanley <laughs> Cup with Detroit. He was on did that. Not, did not team. know that. He was on that stack team back in the day with Shanahan and all those guys. Oh, well, that was before the salary cap kicked in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Literally, yeah. like, almost right before yeah. it kicked in. Yeah, dude. Dude, those teams were so stacked, it was unfair. It was pretty unfair. They should just bring that back. Especially, like, the Colorado teams, too. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, one. Filthy. Yeah, whatever. Hey, a week from today, you're coming to the draft party with me. Oh, you're I'll coming. I'm coming. I said this last episode, like, I, I will drag you there. And I just got a text from our boy, my boy Dan. He said, A.V. is going to screw them up so bad, it's great, referring to Philly. And he's like, I wish you would take rough. <laughs> I was like, yeah, me too. We're talking all this shit. Philly's going to end up making it to the cup final watch. And then lose in double <laughs> overtime <laughs> exactly. in game lose. five to lose, lose the whole thing. And A.V.'s going to take three teams to the cup and lose every single time. I mean, then again, it's like... When you really think about A.V., it's just like he's made it to the cup twice. So I guess you can't really shit on him. It, his style works for like yeah, – I wouldn't be, surpri- here's the, I wouldn't like, be too surprised thing- if, as if he comes in this first season and Philly's actually good. Because, listen, it happened with Maybe. the Rangers. Not that we had a bad team. but No, we had the right people for it. It was a team full of veterans. That's, That's why. We did have a team full of veterans. This is young. And then look what happened when we went young. Everything fell apart. Well, that and plus, you know, he just refuses to adjust mid-game. That's true. But, you know, we don't have him anymore. We have Quinn. I'm happy. Draft is a week away. We have two picks. And it this week I am going to read as many draft profiles as humanly possible. And I will be ready for Friday. Yeah. I was reading, um, no, I was listening to the podcast that uh, DeBrinke was on and Cole Cole Hallfield, he's in the draft. Oh, right? Cole Caulfield. Caulfield? Yeah, he scored like seventy something goals. Yeah, guy's an animal, and you know he's like small too. He's oh, not yeah. a big dude. What well, if watch he falls to the second round like the Brinket? I'm just like, if he falls to twenty, Rangers better. Listen, pick all him. I know is that the Rangers really need to pick somebody that could actually score a goddamn goal. And he's a person. That's what I'm saying. Please pick he somebody is. that can score for once. Hopefully we get that in Kako. Know, speaking of the draft. Next year's, I saw something about it. Like, next year's draft is loaded. And I mean loaded. Like, 2015 loaded. 03 loaded. Uh Uh-oh. Like, next year's draft is going to be good. This draft is going to suck. And, of course, you have the most picks in this one. No, we only have two. Yeah, in the first round, I mean. We had three last year. True. Hey, all that, all we're getting caco. That I'm done. I'm done. Thanks for listening, everyone. Are you done? <laughs> yeah, I'm. Listen, I hope. I listen. I <laughs> hope so. I'm not saying it yet because I'm gonna be the guy that no, jinxes no, them. No, no, no. I'm. We're not drum. Okay. We're not. We're not drum. We, we don't jinx. He's. This is. The, this is a kid who said the Lightning were gonna go undefeated on their way to the cup, and they get swept first. <laughs> so. uh if that's not an ultimate jinx, I don't know what that's is. That's true. But, uh, Kako, if you're listening, just don't ever take a picture with Shades, please. At the U.S. At Open. At the U.S. Open At the U.S. Open specifically. Anywhere it's else is fine. two for two. I'll bring that up every episode if I have to. Kids, two for two with players taking pictures with Hey, I'm just saying. At the U.S. Open, they get some sort I've of pick, massive injury. I've taken a pick with Booney Eves and Mark Stahl 
outside of the garden, they did not get injured. So, Kako, if you see me outside the garden, you're good. Well, Let's take a picture. Mark Stahl is already previously injured, so he got lucky. He didn't get a chance to get injured again. And well, I mean, he did. He technically just got injured, but he didn't get like severely injured, injured like Carlson and and uh, Subban. Okay, you know what? I do take that back. Boo Nieves did get injured, but the GOAT, Mark Stahl, did not. That's because he's not real. He's a robot, and I'm going to end it on that Dude, one. Dude, Mark Stahl is just a he's, a... he's the GOAT, and he's a god. And Kako Kapo is going to be a Ranger a week from today. So thank you very much for listening. Let's go Rangers. Follow us on Twitter at BackupBluePod. We also are on YouTube, Backup Blue Shirts Podcast. Me and Brendan are going to enjoy ourselves next Friday night because I'm dragging his ass to the draft party. And I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, yeah. Capo Caco is going to be a Ranger. I didn't forget that. I just wanted to say it again because I'm excited. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you next time. Bye.